This is Walter Schrode, your roving reporter at KSRC Radio in Socorro, New Mexico. We have with us this afternoon Mr. Lonnie Zamora, the Socorro patrolman that, while chasing a car, found himself in an area about two miles west of Socorro and one mile east of KSRC Radio Station, at which time he reports he came upon an unidentified object resting on four legs, that as he drew closer, the object took off with a loud roar spouting blue, red flame and disappeared in the sky. A great number of cars and Socorro people have gathered here in front of the studios of KSRC to catch a glimpse of Mr. Zamora as he arrived and welcome him with their car horns. Mr. Zamora, after coming upon this object, just what did happen? I went up that little road for about half a mile, I guess. Uh, came up to this uh, little parking deal there on the side of the road, and I sort of glanced out the, w- of the window, looked to my left, and seen this white object on the ground. So I thought it might be a car that had turned over. Uh-huh. So I was the real, the real big Harry going out there to investigate, thought maybe somebody would be hurt. Uh, that time I saw this white ache, shape, uh, egg shape looking object. Is that, is that something like a, like an egg, you mean? Yeah, yeah. from the distance I was, it looked like an egg to me. About the size of a car, I think, uh, someone said. Yes, yeah, sir, it looked like the car had turned over. Uh-huh. That's why I say it's the size of a car. And uh, did it have any kind of markings on it of any kind that you noticed? Yes, it did. Uh, not from that uh, that uh, far, I didn't see the markings. When I went up closer to it, I did see the markings. And uh, someone said that uh, the markings that you saw it was an, an upside-down V with three lines running through it. No, sir, I couldn't tell you that because they still uh, don't want you to say nothing about the markings. No, they don't want you to say anything about the markings. All right, we won't question you on that. And if we run into an area that they don't want you to uh, talk about, well, you just say so. And this happened about 5.30 Friday afternoon. Uh, it happened about uh, 5.50, about 10 minutes to 6. About 10 minutes to 6. And uh, you did place a call in to Sergeant Chavis of the state police to come on out uh, and help you with the investigation. As soon as I saw this uh, object, I didn't know what it was. I placed a call to uh, Sergeant Chavis of the state police. I told him if he would come out there and help me on this. He said, yes, I'll be right there in about a few minutes. And he arrived uh, uh, just about uh, two or three minutes after the object had uh, taken off and, and left. Well, uh, the object was still about a couple of months up there when ever he arrived. Uh, it was still, uh, that's the direction it went. It went that was over the top of the mountain. And mm-hmm. We've heard several reports that it flew low, uh, like it was dragging something, and we've heard some... Uh, it was very low to the ground. At the time I was seeing it, it was very low to the ground up to the perlite uh, meal there, and then it started gaining altitude. Now, uh, also, uh, it was reported to me that when you first drove up into uh, this area and uh, sighted this object, that the motors were running and it was going, uh, boo, 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 or some such uh, such sound as that. Is that uh, correct? Uh, I couldn't say because it happened so fast. Uh, uh-huh. I, I started running, and I was scared. Well, I don't blame you. I uh, thought something even scares me yet. Uh, now, you did say that you saw uh, two what appeared to be people dressed in white uniforms with, uh, did they have helmets on like spacemen or anything? No, sir. I wouldn't say that there are people. I just, I saw something white, white coverall. That's what I could say. They looked like there was something in white coverall. Right. But you didn't, you couldn't identify them as actually being a human being as no, you sir. and I are. No, sir. I couldn't. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, did, you, you didn't know where they turned and saw you or, or what then? Well, uh, to my, I, I would say that this, this white object turned and saw me. Yes. Were they two of them? I would say there were two because one was in front and the other object was in the back. Did you have chan- a, a chance to, to notice what kind of a doorway they had to this, uh, this uh, object, this flying object, didn't notice any doors, no. And uh, uh, when that took off, uh, it, it made a loud, loud roaring sound. Uh, is that 
uh, the other never heard that, that very loud noise, roar sound. And then after it got up in the air about 20 feet, while well, the sound seemed to disappear? The sound was uh, disappeared and was very, very quiet. We could hear a pin drop there. And uh, now the, the markings that left on the ground, now the reports that I have had, and I haven't had a chance to go and take a look in the winds yet, to be probably uh, spoiled a lot of that anyway, was that uh, they were deep indentations in the ground approximately 10 inches wide and uh, 6 to 8 inches deep. Uh, about 15 feet apart. Is that, uh, is that a correct report? Well, I would say it was about 19 feet apart uh, of the uh, prints. Uh -huh. And were there any other prints, like footprints, around the area at the, right after the takeoff or the end, when you were making the investigation? There were some prints, but I wouldn't know if there were footprints or anything, just prints, I would say. Uh, they didn't, you couldn't identify them as actually being a footprint, just no. indentations like maybe somebody might have walked there, or somebody right. might have yeah. walked there. Somebody walked around there because there was, when I got there, there was nobody around there yet. Now there was, uh, according to a report on one of the news, uh, the television stations in Albuquerque, claimed that they had a call uh, just about 5.30 in Albuquerque of a, of a sighting of a flying object, flying in this direction. Did you hear anything about that? No, sir, I didn't. Which, uh, if, if that be true, means that someone in Albuquerque saw this object flying in this direction just prior to your sighting it. And, uh, which collaborates uh, the fact that there was something here. Now, it's the feeling, I get the feeling, at least Lonnie, of the people that I've talked to and they were out in the area, that uh, they are quite sure that something landed there and something took off from, from this spot because of not only the imprint that is left in the ground, but the fires that it started and, and the method of which uh, uh, the fire or the power that it was, whatever it was using, kind of spread itself as it took off. Is that uh, right? Right. Uh, no, there was something out there because I feel it. And... Uh, uh, what was your immediate reaction as soon as you realized that this thing might be an object from outer space? Well, I didn't think it would be an object from outer space because I, I don't believe in, in things like this from outer space. Well, uh, it was something that you'd never seen before and right. was enough to, to scare you to, to run in the other direction. Well, what, what scared me was the loud noise and the flame that the dirty head under it. It had a, a large flame then right. as it took off. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a yellow flame or a it was a bluish, uh, bluish uh, orange flame? I thought this object was going to blow up. That's what started running back. And uh, did you notice whether the uh, these arms that it was sitting on retracted back into the object as it flew away? Or you didn't have, uh, you didn't have time. And if I did run in the other direction right. at that time, I would have done too. Are there any other things of, uh, about uh, this sighting that you think our listening audience might be interested in or something that you'll be allowed to tell us? No, that's all I saw. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, you, did it disappear into the high sky after it got over around the perlite? Or, or just, just yeah, the sure. it flew low to the perlite mine, and then from there on it just so fast that you could barely do right and right up in the air. You have to be paying attention to what you were looking at to see what what you were doing. Uh huh. Well, do uh, you think we're going to get any more of them around here? Hope not. Not <laughs> immediately. Well, it was uh, quite an interesting experience, I'm sure, and it has caused an awful lot of comment. Uh, it, did the investigators that were called in uh, make any comments at all in one direction or, or the other, uh, with the exception of that they do not have any such object in this area? Oh, they are still puzzled themselves, yes. And there's been no report on uh, the samplings they took of the uh, area around there from the burning brush and the area that the blast hit the ground. That might give them a clue as to what kind of power was being used on this. No, plant. sir, no. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I think I've just about covered it here. Uh, let's see. Uh, it wasn't dragging anything. We had a report that uh, it was dragging something as it went. No, I wouldn't say it was dragging nothing. Just low to the ground. And uh, you can't think of anything else than about the sighting of this flying object that our 
listening audience might uh, be interested in. No, it's all I say now. Well, Lonnie, I'm sure you've been getting an awful lot of uh, questions and a lot of inquiry. I imagine you're beginning to get a little tired of it, actually, for so many people calling and asking you about it. Maybe this will be one way to keep uh, too many people from I mean, you have to go through the story over and over again. Right. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, Mr. Lonnie Zamora. This is the gentleman, the support patrolman, that yet, uh, Friday at around 10 minutes to 6, come upon an object, a flying object, an unidentified flying object, as the uh, government prefers to call them. I got them. Uh, excuse me, Walter. I got some some military people at the service office who want to talk to me now. I believe they're from the UFO. Uh, well, you have some military people that are here from the uh, UFO to talk to you right now and to ask you some more questions yes, about sir. this. And uh, they have not in any way tried to indicate that they didn't want us to uh, to uh, cover this type of news. Yes, no, sir. I just told them uh, I was going to come here and talk to you on the radio station. Is this all right? Well, that's, that's fine. And uh, we would be interested in knowing uh, what they think about it, if, 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 if they will allow it. And after you get through talking to them, if you would call us back here at KSRC and to give us some of the information that they might allow you to let us broadcast. We'd be glad to. All right. And, uh, this is tomorrow. I hope that you don't come upon any more of these objects. Yeah. <laughs> Unless we find out exactly what they are. So it's been a pleasure, Mr. Zamora, having you in our studios. And we want to thank you. And I know our listeners thank you. And this is, uh, expressed by the great number of cars that are out here in front of our studio just to get a glimpse of, uh, what we might call a Socorro celebrity right at the moment. Thank you again, Mr. Zamora. It's been very nice having you in the KSRC studio. You're just been listening to a KSRC radio special featuring an interview with Mr. Lonnie Zamora, the patrolman here in Socorro, that sighted a unidentified object that flew away when he drove a bomb.